Hi everyone, welcome to Hair Social's Takeover Talks, the brainchild of Simon Townley. My name is Daryl Starkey and today I am joined with Safi Burton and Nicola Ham. And today we're going to be talking about all things assisting in the hairdressing industry. So I'm going to let these girls take over for a second, introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Nicola, would you like to introduce yourself? So yeah, so um, my name is Nicola Ham. Um, I'm based down in Portsmouth and I'm a self-employed hairstylist. Um, I've been in the industry for probably about 13 years um, and currently I am on the Fellowships Project X, so that's uh, my year for the, for the forward future, so I really look forward to doing all of that. Amazing, thank you. And yourself, Safi? Uh, so my name's Safi Burton. Uh, I, I'm a salon owner. I've got a salon in Ellsby, Buckinghamshire. I've been in the industry for about 17 years. I'm also one of the fellowship project team. So I'm actually on Project Colour. And this year I'm also a Goldwell, well, I'm a Goldwell artist. Amazing. And obviously my name is Daryl Starkey. I'm also on the um, fellowship Project Colour team, which we were meant to do last year, but it's moved on to this year, which we're really, really excited about. And we gained all these opportunities from assisting in the industry. So we're just going to give everyone a bit of information about what assisting is, what it means to us and how you can actually get into assisting. So my first question to you two girls is, how did you get started into being an assistant and where have you assisted? So Safi, do you want to take it up first? So to be fair, my first assistant was actually with you. And I probably say that was it was completely just from talking to you on Instagram, getting to know you. Uh, yeah, so I've not really done too much of it, really, but it's kind of sparked me to kind of want to do even more of assisting now. Has it gained you any opportunities from assisting? What has it got you? <laughs> well, it's given me a complete drive now to do shoots. Uh, and to be fair, just to go out and ask more people to if I can assist, to, if I can learn more and do more things with helping people. Amazing. And Nicola, for yourself? So um, I actually started assisting a lady well, maybe a couple of years ago, and that was through social media. Um, so I think that's opened up a lot of opportunities for people. Um, obviously, I've assisted you as well. I assisted you on your Roots collection um, and Dylan as well. Um, I, I think, like Safi just said, one of the things you come away from assisting is actually then wanting to go and potentially do your own collection. It, it gets ideas going. Um, and it's just an amazing thing to be a part of. And I, for me, it's definitely helped me with things. Like, you know, in the first lockdown, I did a lot of lives. Um, but I think that gave me opportunities to talk to more people. Um, and things like, uh, because of doing that, I think it got me onto Project X as well. Um, because I had uh, something to put forward for a reason why I could be a part of that team. Yeah, totally. I agree with that. Because obviously, as someone who's applied to be one of the fellowship team members, we use a lot of like I when I was applying, I used because I've assisted quite a few people in the industry. So you've got Rick Roberts, Carolyn Saun Carolina Saunders, Carolyn Newman, Sally Brooks, Robert Eaton, all these sort of people that gave me that time to go and assist. It's given me the knowledge, the education and the confidence to go and put myself out there, which then I gave the opportunities back. Like both of you say you've assisted on a different shoot together. Um, with myself but it's then I've been able to give the opportunities to people like yourself and I know we have got an exciting May coming up because we've got a shoot with Fellowship Project Colour and I've also got my next shoot which I know both of you are really happy to be assisting on again which I'm really excited to be doing. Uh, so the next thing I'd like to say is has any doors opened up for you? So uh, Nicola you were just touching upon how um, you got onto Project X. Hopefully you don't mind me asking, but obviously the first time round you did apply for Project X and Project Colour, and this was prior yeah. to assisting. How yeah. has the system changed and gave you more information to put forward on applications? I think, um, you know, it does come down to experience. I mean, you know, you are assisting, you do pick up little tips and tricks, um, and then that I managed to put back into my own work. So then when I was applying for like the, the projects this year, it meant one, I had something to write about. I had a little bit more experience. Um, I could refer back to my own social media page and be like, oh, well, look, you know, you can see what I've been up to over the last year. Um, I, I think it just gives you a little bit more to write about, about yourself. Um, and yeah, just everything you learn from it. You do learn a lot from assisting people. Um, I totally agree with that. And yourself, Saffron, has it opened any doors for you? 
Uh, I wouldn't say it's opened any doors, but I would probably say it's opened doors within myself, if that makes sense. So, like, I pushed myself to do stuff what I probably would have never done. So, like, when we did the shoot uh, recently, Davil, and I did the textured big hair, and I was kind of working on that. that that's hair what I've never worked on before. So it kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. So it's, it's really good to kind of do lots of different things, what you don't do every single day in your normal salon work. Yeah, and for me, with... Um... The doors it's opened it's just gave me the opportunity and the confidence to go and then get the opportunity to go and be on stage as myself um rather than being the person that's passing up giving grips or holding hair which is amazing like i believe you should be doing that first but then you've got that opportunity to then go and get that confidence to go and stand on stage with of yourself and i know Nic nicola with me and you and there's a few others last year we went and took went and launched an artistic team at um the fellowship members night which was a, such an, a crazy crazy experience but that wouldn't have happened and that team would have been created without us all going to assist other people do you agree yeah definitely i think um yeah it definitely gave us a bit more drive i think to get out there and try and do some things like you said i don't think we would have been given that opportunity otherwise yeah. and watching from the audience i just have to say you both did absolutely oh, yeah. amazing <laughs> 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 we, didn't feel like we, felt, we didn't feel amazing going on stage and coming out. It was like those nerves were really kicking in. But nerves are a good thing. Nerves are something yeah. that you take up on board and run with. And then, obviously, assisting, there's always going to be a good thing and there's always going to be a bad thing about it. So I want to touch upon the best thing that you took away from assisting first before you pick, where we pick up the bad point. Because as much as this is about really showing people that they need to get into the industry and assist, there is sometimes there's bad things about it. So I like to touch upon the good things and then they'll see if there is any negative things you found from assisting would also be good to hear. So people have an honest vision into the world of assisting. So Safi, do you want to start with this one? What's your best part of it? So again, the best thing is, again, learning. Like, I don't think you ever stop learning as, as much as that sounds really cliche in the industry. It, it's kind of watching someone else work and they might be doing something really, really similar to how you do it, but in a slightly different way. So I definitely say just being there and watching people learn and even watching the photographers as well. Like it's not even just the hairdressers or the other assistants. It's like seeing how the photographer works and things like that. Yeah. So that I would say, yeah, that's definitely my best thing. Yeah. Nicola, what was your, what was your best thing about assisting? Um, I, for me, I, I, you know, a little bit like what Safi's saying there, definitely all those things you come away with. But I think it's um, almost coming away a little bit more creative. Like I, I walk away from those days and I think, oh, my God, if I did a shoot, I could do this. And actually I could do that. And like you said, it's seeing how someone else does maybe what you already do, but easier or just a slightly different way. And I, I definitely think it gives you a little bit of inspiration. Oh, 100%. For me, it's the knowledge. It's the education you get. It's you, when you stand there and even if you're just holding a piece of hair up for someone, whatever they're doing, your brain is picking that up and you're learning a mm. skill set. So f when I was working uh, and assisting backstage for the fellowship at Pro Hair in Manchester, I was stood next to R uh, Robert Eaton and he was sewing a, a wig together, which is then I, what I did uh, on the glow image that me and Saffron did. So Saffron, you brushed it all out and create the texture, but I actually handmade that wig. So it was the, the knowledge that you learn from assisting people because you, a lot of time assisting, you don't get paid, which isn't a bad thing, but the knowledge you take away is actually your payment sometimes. Would you agree with that? The knowledge is always more important than a payment sometimes. 100%. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously there's got to be a negative. Sometimes there's, there's got to be a negative side of everything. And it's not to belittle anything about assisting because I still want to assist you both still assisting in the industry. If there was any negative thing, what would you say for people to look out for um, or to make sure they watch out for to make sure they don't have a negative experience? So I was thinking about this. I, I, like I thought really hard about what is the negative? I think um, I think for myself, the only thing I can think of, and it, it's the honesty part of it, is 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 actually what you just said then is the money side of it. Um, so I live quite close to London, you know, a lot of shoots happen there. It's not too far for myself to travel. But at the end of the day, you may be paying, you know, for your petrol money, your train money. Um, so it is something to take into account. So whilst I'd say, you know, jump at any opportunity someone gives you, I'd also maybe think, right, is that the shoot for me to go along to? Like, I don't know, say for argument's sake, it was 
a man like men's barbering you know shoot am I going to learn from that yes probably but would it be the best shoot for me to go to maybe not men's hairdressing isn't something I do a lot of um but I think that's literally the only thing like I you know it's just it's your time and money so if you can spare that 100% do it but I do think you know be realistic about it um that, that's the only thing really other than that I love doing it <laughs> that would probably be my when I was obviously got the questions and we were talking about them the negative side is for me it's costs a lot of money because yeah. where I'm from I'm a, I, like the east of the country uh Skegness literally on the seaside I can throw a stone and I hit the beat the beach sort of thing so for me to travel to London to Manchester wherever these shoots are it costs me money and then I have to have accommodation and all this sort of thing but as much as it is a negative thing sometimes putting money into your career and assisting can like can gain you opportunities and like I say that money that I put into a hotel or I put into travel that is actually money if I paid someone to go and do a one-to-one -one course with them to learn that technique so it's a, it's a like a 50 50 it's a negative because you've got to spend money half the time and then it's a positive because it actually you're gaining education from that and it's just like you i totally agree with what nick just said is make sure that it's right for you like for me i don't think i would go and assist on a man shoot male shoot because it's not me as a hairdresser so make sure the shoots you're assisting on or is going to have value for your your career path going forward would you both would you agree with that safi yeah, hundred percent. Now, to be fair, until someone says it, I suppose you don't think about it. Uh, I'd probably say, listening to you two as well, the only other one I would say is a negative. If you've been in the industry for so long, it's really hard to kind of go on someone else's shoe and remember. But it's their shoe; you're there assisting them. Mm. So it's, it's, it sounds really bad, but it's knowing your place on a shoe. Like you are there to assist the hairdresser. And that hairdresser might have been in the industry for like two years, but you just don't want to take over. It's kind of let them. You're there to help them. So I'd probably say that's probably the only other negative. It's just know your place sort of thing. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, for myself, as someone who has assisted and then had people assisting them, I've seen both sides. So sometimes I've literally just had to know my place and be like, right, I'm standing back, just sort of like <laughs> waiting. But then there's other shoots, like when I worked with Emmanuel Esteban, he was like, get in there do put this do that do that and he let me get hands on and both of you two have worked on uh, shoots with me and assisted I'm not the sort of person that just says ah oh, stand back can you just hold me a grip I'm like right Safi can you jump on that person Nick can you braid can you do that and I get you involved because I think that's that's a good thing then when something for me when assisting or um having assistance is to really praise them on social media as well so something I've always done and the people I've assisted have always done is like tag the people in there whenever you put an image up there i always put assistance and tag you guys in there whenever i've had work published your names have been published under my images and i think this is something that people who have assistance on shoot should really do because people are going to see that and it's going to like you say it gives you sort of a portfolio as well to say look at me i've done this and then you can then go and like you say nick you went and got on the fellowship project x team because you were able to go i've now done all this look at me and you got a place, which I think you deserved the place the first time round. <laughs> but like you say, you understood why you probably didn't get a place. And then you you use that, you use the momentum and you went for more stuff and then got more stuff on your like your C V to get there. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. I think um uh, like I said, all of it is an opportunity to learn from. Um and yeah, it just gives you constant experience. And and like you said, I think it's really nice if you can acknowledge the people that are on the shoots with you. If you can you know, tag them, give them a little shout out about something. Because it's, like I said, a lot of the time we've also put in work behind the scenes too. Um, and whilst it's not our shoot, we are simply there to assist. It is nice just to have someone go, yeah, they were with me that day. So, yeah, I think it's it's the right thing to sort of do for people. Yeah. And then, Safi, I'm just going to touch upon, obviously, the shoot I did with you. So, obviously, you came across to be an assistant for me. However, we did the collection. Um, it went amazing but then like you you touched upon we had a wig that we used because obviously we were doing wig work so we are sewing the wigs coloured them and stuff and then you styled and prepped it for me then I placed it onto the model and just finished it off before it went on but that image now isn't my image even though I paid for that image it's actually an image that I say it's mine and saffron's because 
she did half of the work. Like I'm never gonna say it was mine because if I did that, I just don't think it would have come across like fair. And Safi, if I was to have said that was my work, how would that have made you feel? Uh, I probably would have been like, I, I styled that, but I was on your shoot. Like I was assisting you. Like that was your vision. And all I was doing is I was helping you make your vision come to life. And I think when you assist people, you kind of got to respect the fact, but you might do the whole hairdo, but it's their vision. You're, so you kind of, you're assisting them really. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I still probably would have posted it everywhere and said, I did this. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's fair to just be honest and be like, really show you the appreciation because like we've just touched upon, assisting is free half of the time until you get to a certain point in your career where you can like not demand a payment, but you've got to this point in the career where someone approaches you and say, can you assist me? And you go, okay, what's the fee? Um, but I do think that everyone needs to go and assist for free within some point in their career and just start like, how did you guys, obviously for yourself, I think I contacted both of you and asked you to assist, but how did you get into assisting other people coming up? So I know you were both assisting other people as well over the next year. How, how have you gained those opportunities? If they contacted you or did you contact them? Um, I think, yeah, so everything I'm sort of helping on this year, um, I've been asked to come back and assist again, because like, I do yourself, um, Dylan, um, I assisted him before, I'm going to help him again. Um, and like I said, the, the lady that I first ever assisted, I actually found, I found her through um, a Facebook page that's um, sort of all creative people and people are always looking for makeup artists, hairdressers, um, and I approached her on that occasion um but yeah i think now it's got to a point where if you've assisted someone once if they like you and they can trust you enough to be on shoot with them hopefully they'll ask you to come back again um so yeah i think that's that's a nice thing now with it people get to know you a little bit more yeah and then safi for yourself how did you gain the ones that you've got coming up uh, to be fair, at the moment, I've only actually got the one with you because uh, I've not committed because of everything what's going on. I don't really want to commit because after doing the first shoot with you for UBHA, it's actually given me the drive now to do my own shoots. Uh, yeah. So I've got quite a few plans for this year. But then what I'm planning on doing is actually having my team assist because I'm a salon owner. I kind of want to give that opportunity to my own staff. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I'd love to do that. Um, but uh, like, there's hairdressers in my team that just are happy being salon hairdressers, which is nothing wrong with that. So, which is why I reached out to people that I really trust in the industry. Like, like even though Nicola, you didn't work on the um, pigments collection, you still seen the images before they got released. And obviously Safi, you seen them anyway, because you were on there. But it's having people like that, that you can really trust, that you can then go, look at these images, help me choose and this sort of stuff. Cause it's nice to have that bounce back with people. And obviously yeah. you really build that relationship. Now we're going to get on to like a question and hopefully the people you're going to say will hear it and get in contact with you. So we all have a list of names that you want to assist in the industry. I want one name off you each. And if you come up with the same name, you're going to have to change it. Um, but I think I know, I think I know who Saffron's is anyway. Um, who is one person you want to assist and why do you want to assist them? Safi, you can go first. Well, you kind of know who mine is straight away, don't you? Angelo Seminaro. Like, yeah. We get I to wanted... work yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I'm looking forward to the Fellowship Day. I think seeing his name there. And again, I'm really lucky. He's actually one of the Goldwell uh, main artists now this year as well. I just want to get inside his brain and just see how he, like, he makes all this come to life. Like, some of it can be, like, the most simplest thing, but you look at the colour work. And for me, I'm all about colour. And I just, uh, yeah, massively Angelo, to be fair. So, Angelo, if you want watching... <laughs> <laughs> Slide into the DMs, you hit her up. As George Bell said, slide into her DMs. <laughs> and Nicola, who is the one person you want to assist? Um, you should know, actually, as well, because um, I do fangirl a little bit when I've seen him out in hairdressing events. And I'm probably going to really offend him now by saying his name wrong. But my number one person would be Robert Masquiaf. Oh, his work is amazing. I love his avant-garde work so much. Um, a, a bit like, you know, what Safi's saying, just getting inside their mind and just seeing how it works. I, I find his work absolutely fascinating and amazing. Um, I just yeah, definitely. <laughs> we went to the Fellowship um, Project Colour Project X finals 
like in 2019 yeah. and he was in front of us and Nick was like oh, oh my god there he is <laughs> Safi you were there as well but and she just remember that image where she was like proper melting because she just wanted to go across to him and she just didn't have the confidence to go in like say hello but yeah I, I sort of knew both of yours who was going to come up because obviously being friends with you working with you closely I sort of knew being at an industry events I sort of gone right yeah, I knew who's come in. So for me, I've assisted quite a few big names already, um, which has been amazing. And the way I did that, so my mentor, my one of my closest friends is Daniel Granger. And we both have a mutual friend um, of Jamie Stevens. And I want to mm. assist Jamie Stevens because I love his no bullshit attitude to hairdressing. Like the way he presents on stage, the way he literally interacts with an audience for me is like mesmerizing i just want to get like you just said get into his head how does he have that confidence how does he have that knowledge to just say it without thinking um so yeah for myself it would be jamie stevens all day every day i want to just know how he thinks of the stuff and obviously as again he is the fame team project leader for the fellowship so my aim over the next year is to apply for fame team and hopefully he's still the mentor for 2022 if i get a place because then obviously i get to work with them as well so but we're coming to obviously the end of assisting um and it's been like a really great topic i think everybody should assist at some point within their career just give some like two top tips on what to do when you assist so how to approach it how to be on the assistant shoot and also where can people find you if they want to contact you so what what links where can they find you on social media so Nicola, do you want to go first? Two top tips and then your social media accounts. Yeah, so I think um, it's just being prepared to do anything at a minute's notice. You know, like you said, you might be there one minute holding hair, passing up grips, and then they might turn around and go, right, I need you over there now. Can you quickly go do this? So I think it is a matter of being attentive. Um, and I always like to make, make sure before I go, um, I ask for a list of anything they may wish for me to bring equipment wise. Because like I said, there's variation some shoots yes you might just be there holding the hair I've been on other shoots where like right I need you to curl crimp straighten do whatever so I like to make sure I'm really prepared before I go to a shoot um so yeah make sure your kit's prepared the night before don't pack it the morning of um and just be really on the ball on the day um and then if anyone would like to find me um I'm mostly on Instagram so it's it's Nicola Crystal Hair over there Amazing. And yourself, Safi, two things in your social accounts. She nicked one of mine, to be fair. I was going to say that as well. <laughs> be prepared to do whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, to be fair, it's similar to Nicola. Just be prepared. Be ready to kind of just go if you like, if someone messages you last minute, like be there. Because to be fair, I think the reason I got on the pigment one was because Nicola couldn't actually do that day because we were like locked down. So no, I don't mind saying it. <laughs> But that's what I mean. It's like I was ready and like and I was happy to just jump on that. And don't be scared to message people either. Like I always say when I'm talking about my colour work, like send me a message. Like most people are the most open people ever. Like we're hairdressers. We talk to people day in, day out. So it's not like anyone's going to blank you. So if you want to ever assist, just message someone. The worst they can say is their, their shoot's full. But at least you've kind of got in there. And then, to be fair, I'm mainly on Instagram as well. So my Instagram is at Safi, but it's four Fs, uh, not just what, not just one. <laughs> Unfortunately, Safi B already, Safi Baker already took my Safi B thing. And then my salon page is Safi B underscore Hair. Uh, again, on Instagram as well. And just quickly, if anybody wants that education that you've just ho announced, where can they find to book education with you, Safi? Did I just say about education? I completely forgot that. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> yeah so this year I'm doing uh, some Gold World courses at the Gold World Academy. Um, mine's going to be very much focused on vivid colour, how to get clients doing vivid colour and people and pushing them out of the comfort zone really with vivid. So yeah, Amazing. get into the Gold World. Yeah, and so for myself, like the as an assistant and someone who has people assisted. So is knowing your fundamental skills, is knowing how to prep hair, how to curl hair, how to braid hair, how to put a ponytail up and quite tightly. 
And like you say, Nicola, you were going to be assisting on pigments, but because of the tiered restrictions and stuff like that, you weren't able to make it. But then I knew Safi had the skill set that was needed as an assistant, which is why I literally went, Safi, can you do it? And she's like, how yet? But for me, it's knowing your fundamental skills, really knowing how to hold and make hair look clean. Because like Safi, you touched upon earlier, is watching a photographer. A photographer is looking at the hair. It takes a picture and it's like that piece of hair. And you're like, you can't see it, but the camera picked it up and they're like, change that. And it's just knowing how to change a piece of hair without disturbing the rest of it. Um, and to find myself again, it's on Facebook, which is Daryl Starkey. Um, or if you go over to um, Instagram, it's Daryl of Taylors, which is again, mostly on um, Instagram, but I am on Facebook as well. I just want to thank you both for joining us on the first episode of Takeover Talks. It's been amazing. Um, you both took out the time to share your journeys with us and everybody who is watching. Episode two is um, hosted by someone else and it is an audio podcast and it's going to be with Heffy Wheeler, Wheeler sorry, talking about all things social media. And then episode three is a visual and audio one coming back with myself and we'll be talking about why it's important to get the next generation into the hair industry. And I'll be joined with people for like concept hair and choose hair as well. So thank you all for watching. Post your comments, like, share. And if you want to get in touch with us, please do. And we're happy to reply to any messages. So thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.